Hey, 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 Uh, we were talking about The Last of Us. Spoilers! Yeah, we're gonna Spoiler. be spoiling. Okay, now this. <laughs> right, so, so, so this, this is. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, there's this question. <laughs> yeah, the, If you're listening to a, this the, this podcast, how are you gonna know when to. Stop the spoiler. Uh, yeah, I mean, how, how are you gonna know when to resume playback? Because we have a spoiler alert for The Last of Us. Just play The Last of Us before you listen to the podcast. Yes. Okay, please. go ahead. <laughs> play oh, The Last, play of, last of Us. We'll, and then tell them pause. that you were referred to by <laughs> Channel 14. All right, we're gonna give a pause. Play the last of us. We'll wait. How many? Hours and then you're done. Okay, so let's go back. <laughs> All so right. what didn't you like about the ending? Yeah, you, did you play? You didn't play it with the DLC, right? I wasn't able to play through the DLC. I don't think I will play through the DLC because I did not like the main campaign. I did not like the payoff at the end. Why did you not like the payoff at the end? Because I thought just, all payment is good. <laughs> no, I just thought that the ending, the ending wasn't so much as an ending to a story, but rather just stopped. There was no sense of resolution to it. For me, I kind of thought that. English I thought teacher, that the. Uh, for a while, I really thought that the story was not even going to be going to that portion where they actually meet the resistance fighters, the Fireflies. Because well, you guys already know you the Fireflies actually found the cure to the mushroom zombie apocalypse. Turns out to be Ellie's blood. On the way that they could actually cure the apocalypse is, is that if they extract. Every living, every part of her tissue, and then synthesize an antidote to that. Actually, that part I did not have a problem. Oh, they saw it coming because come on. Regarding the reviews I read about the Last of Us, it was we like apologize. Wearing, we, we apologize for the verbosity of our friend Bok here. Well, I guess you already know that. <laughs> yeah, but but here's the thing, Bok. We still haven't, got got yeah, we, we still haven't of gotten what you didn't I like. I think the. <laughs> I did <laughs> not like, like the <laughs> story. I did not. <laughs> That's exactly what you were saying. Yeah. No. No, I, here's what I'm trying oh. to point at. I think the last of us point was Joel's relationship with Ellie. Yes, was That was it. How he views it. Like, screw the entire world and what world thinks of Ellie and what the entire problem If is. If that'll be the case, then my goodness. The ending sort of doesn't give that sort of resolution. I mean, if we're gonna talk about his relationship, well, I, I think we're gonna be talking the resolution to that. Yeah, uh, because again, screw the world. Tell- I'm gonna take care of Ellie. But him telling a lie to save Ellie. To save Ellie. Because yeah, that's the, that's her point. That, that's Joel's point. I don't know. I thought I thought that I think when it came to that point, I think that has to be a problem with the storytelling because it only or a came problem to with Joel's point. character. Why does he? Why, why does Joel has to resort? Telling a lie to Ellie. Why actually, can't he just tell Ellie, "I'm gonna save you"? Actually, it's previewed. Like uh, if you play the very first mission, is yeah, how sure. Joel loses his yeah, daughter. Exactly. That's why. So he doesn't I want to. I think it was set up. Doesn't want the same thing to set happen. Up. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think actually, uh, what they were trying to say that uh, is that uh, it's a sort of anti-consequentialist uh, a lesson that uh, one life. Is worth the whole world, especially if you love that life. That's what I think uh, the point of Last so, of Us is. So I we're mean, saying that Bok is wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in the same way that um, that that movie about like teachers was amazing. Okay. What about no? Like, I, uh, I that about society and that, that that movie about the guy who takes um, pain medicine. Max, <laughs> Max Pain. <laughs> oh, you suck. No, um, <laughs> inside jokes aside. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Do you think the execution was wrong, or, or was it a problem with the storytelling? The there might be a problem with the execution. It might be the execution from there, um, or maybe it got distracted by the mechanics, or the like entire a, story. There's a big story happening and then with the, the world. Yes, I think that part. Actually, I, I sort of get what Bok is saying because. Yeah. This is a. a, a I, mean, I, I don't know. I think if if you're meant to be drawn into the relationship between Joel and Ellie, I think really the ending just really killed off and all sorts of sympathy can have for Joel himself. Because I really, right, I, that. I, I, really I think I uh, fine, fine. But I think it's just like I think I think I understand what you're ma- what you're telling yeah. me. It's about spec ops line also, where you don't want to go there, but the game is derail. I mean, railroading yeah. to that particular part. But I don't know. I think the idea of it was that the ending. I really just felt 
I think the ending just really stopped. Uh, it it just stopped. There was no end. Well, if you want a game that just stopped Deus Ex Human Evolution, well, that just game, stopped. Yeah. <laughs> that just freaking stopped. I mean, like, press a button. And, and I mean, <laughs> um, I might sound uh, this might be a controversial statement, but then again, I think knowing our group, we're known for our unpopular opinions. Not really, <laughs> no. More, uh, fine, knowing myself, I'm going for my unpopular opinions, but that I, actually, exactly that me. I actually had a more satisfying experience with Mass Effect 3 as compared to The Last of Us. Mm. I actually thought mm. the ending of Mass Effect 3, at least with, with regard to the just the idea of stopping the Reapers. At least in the end of that, I mean, yeah, I think all the, just the different colors aside, I actually kind of expected it already, or, I don't know, I just found it to be okay. Well, uh, I think the problem with your experience with The Last of Us, that, and, that, and I, I saw this problem too, is that the game ran too long. Uh, I think the last one hour of gameplay was just frivolous. Uh, it became suddenly shooty action bits. Yeah, I, I think from the point of Joel, where Joel uh, uh, gets stabbed with a girder, uh, when, he fell from the... when he fell from the, I think from that point onwards, it, it just got. It was it, the story was already out of control. I, don't know, I, get of feeling, us, so. I actually get a feeling that you know that entire mission segment with Ellie, right? Mm-hmm. I thought that I think at that time. You thought that he think that the yeah. time. What? Sorry. <laughs> I was kind of thinking that the story will end with I love Joel calling out English teachers rescuing Ellie. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought that would be the better ending, where then the relationship between Joel and Ellie would have been established by then. So I thought that would be the perfect ending. Uh, but then yeah. when it came, when what is the name of the place? Was it an, was were they in an, in Atlanta? No, they're closer to Utah. Oh yeah, Utah, uh, Salt Lake City. Then when they came, when they arrived in Salt Lake, the home City, of jazz. Well, I can't remember, but in that last place, yeah. the, the one Utah place. kind of jazz, <laughs> yeah. basketball joke. Right. <laughs> but I thought, Inga, I think uh, it became too long. Over well, long. Uh, Over no, long. The, the, it's a limitation I Under think of, uh, of video game storytelling because at some point you have to play the game. That, that's I think the root uh, the root of the of the uh, frivolous extra hour of storytelling. But what that did was that. It took you out of the relationship between Joel, Joel, Joel and Ellie. That they sort of lost that because in the movie, uh, you're that that. Because I've been told that in a movie, the director's job is to guide you through a roller coaster of emotions. Now, in a movie, it's around two hours long. One emotional this point. Just got really smart. Yeah. Yeah. One emotional <laughs> point uh, blends into another. And, be- and it blends into an hour because it's usually just 15 minutes apart. But here you go from the last really tender moment of Joel and Ellie. And an hour or so later, you're, you, you're here in, in, uh, in that ending where Joel basically slaughters everybody. <laughs> and you've already sort of forgotten uh, or you're, you've already emotionally forgotten the tenderness between the two. Yeah. So it's hard, it becomes harder to, to experientially justify so, so what it's is good video game storytelling, um, and how do you reconcile that with the gameplay? Or should like video game designers just do away with um, storytelling in video games because a game isn't about a story but about a game? Yeah, and is The Last of Us gonna be like the Final Fantasy series? Like <laughs> the title is like you're expecting. Okay, this is gonna this be, the be the last, last one. one, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, but well, then they just DLC oh. titles left then behind. Fourteen right? titles later. <laughs> No, not it's to be still f- the last of us. <laughs> no, to be fair, it, it did not say the last. It said the last of us, and us oh. could be a lot of people. Unlike Final Fantasy, so it's the Final Fantasy. <laughs> well, you do, you guys do know that Final Fantasy was meant to be the game, the last game of Square. <laughs> yeah, it turned out to be a huge hit. So it turned out to so, have. Uh, back to the yeah, point. Back of, to the question. Uh, video game video storytelling. Games. I think. Uh, I don't think video games should do away with the story. Yeah, it's right. good so, that The Last oh, of Us of did these things. It's just unfortunate that so how the do we, went to So how do you reconcile that? Like, what, what's, what, is your propose, what, what is the proposed solution? The epitome would still have to be Silent Hill 2. That's what you're sorry to tell uh, For me, uh, if you're looking at practical points, uh, uh, The Last of Us, the first five hours was perfect, I think. I think it was just a matter of uh, trimming down the of trimming down. Yes, uh, if the, the last hour, I think was, uh, was unnecessary because I think that was more of a. It might have been a producer's call because that they wanted to extend the gameplay, but 
uh, I think if you could accept that this amount of gameplay will satisfy your customer, uh, you'll satisfy your audience, and they will have a per- uh, an emotional, a cathartic reaction already. Uh, I think it, it need needs to be a better blend of uh, of a storytelling and and gameplay so that uh, you're not caught trying to expand expand one at, at expense of the other. Yes. So it's a ma- I think the Last of Us hit on a good formula. It's just a matter of balancing. Uh, so I it, think that tends to be the problem for most Naughty Dog games because that tends to be also the problem with Uncharted too. Mm. Actually, even Uncharted 1, which I didn't get to finish already, but Uncharted 2 was good to an extent, but then mm. there, were just really way, there were just way too many action set pieces. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine a Michael Bay film, it's the explosion of Actually, everything. For it's like me, a video game equivalent of a Michael Bay film. Well, that is what Uncharted is all about. It's Actually, supposed for to be a, a shooty action. Boss, uh, which is not bad. A bang bang. bang. So for me, <laughs> bang, bang uh, controversy aside, Video game. video game storytelling the best video game storytellers out there it's Rockstar if you play mm, Red, Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption. Oh gosh, <laughs> perfect Red Dead. blend uh, because the story is consistent the story is well paced unless you really and it, 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 if you if you want to to really for example rack up the gameplay fine you can just lose yourself in the open sandbox but when you're ready if you're the kind of guy who wants to go fast paced in the story you can do that and the same, so the story unfolds at your pace and it works with your imagination about the character about what he's mm-hmm. supposed to do what he's supposed to I be John Marston. so I think and it's uh, well Red Dead Redemption is the exemplar even even Grand Theft Auto had that to an extent yeah which GTA uh, 3 even 5 3 was amazing for Wait, uh, 3, 4 and 5 amazing. uh, uh for GTA uh, three, not uh, not Liberty. No, I mean Vice City or no Liberty GTA three. Oh, oh, GTA Vice City, San Vice City Andreas. Was perfect. Oh yeah, San Vice Andreas City. was perfect. Uh, well, uh, San, San Andreas, Andreas okay I found me. it to be Vice too City big. was amazing for me. Three was amazing. Four, I'm a bit iffy. Uh, no, I so tried I to play, play Ballad of Gay Tony because what everyone said that was better than the actual game. I, I tried Gay playing Tony. four. My goodness, I, I think you're right. Because I was chores. Uh, it was for a chore. Me, Gameplay guided by uh, story guided by good game. Uh, no, gameplay guided by good story. Yeah, I, I think the bits. Say if you're following a trail, um, the bits of the trail, like the cookies that you're following <laughs> in the trail, should be good yeah. story. The only misstep I think with four was that, uh, like you, could, you couldn't get out of, uh, for it's example, the chores, the chores <laughs> when <laughs> these things should be yeah. more appropriately designated as side missions. Mm-hmm. Like uh, this something was, you do your own yeah. time. It was something things. you do at your own time, or something you do only if you feel that this is something your the character you're creating would do. Mm. That's yeah. what I love about Mass Effect's yeah. romance options. Yeah, They're that. not essential to the story, but mm. if you pursue it, it adds something, mm. and then you can pursue it. On your own time, you can choose who you want to romance mm. at your own pace. <laughs> Actually, there, there's oh, yeah. a there's a certain drawback to that. I, I think. Uh, well, well, it's nice, mm. uh, and it, this is just a, I guess it's more of a side effect. Like, uh, effect. for example, <laughs> <laughs> for example, and I think this is becoming a sickness with Bioware RPGs. With Dragon Age Inquisition, you hear people who play it. They, they talk like it's a dating sim and not an RPG. So, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, it, because boyfriend for the win. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. That pigeon game, have to pull boyfriend for the win. Yeah, does that count as a game and like storytelling and stuff? Like that, that's always um, a, that's another thing that I find said interesting. It's more of a visual. No, I don't know what you call that. Visual novel. No, yeah, visual novel. But interactive then, aren't, novel. Aren't uh, well, yeah, an interactive novel. But like, how do you should should there be a distinction say between you know your traditional like video games. Uh, vis-a-vis like your visual novel hot of boyfriend type like the uh, the Catherine. Walking Dead game I, I think, Catherine I think they're, they're uh, Catherine they're, has puzzle elements yeah because uh, you, if you the, uh, if the visual novel it's essentially just you clicking through a novel and there's pretty pictures uh that's guided, a, that's by, the music yeah. guided by the music. Guided by a music. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes there's music. Sometimes there's, there's voice. If the production value is high enough. There are choice options. Yeah. Some some have a sort of choose your own adventure type feel, but it's essentially just click to get to the next chapter, get to the next page. Uh, but there are some some 
quote unquote visual novels that are called visual novels but actually have a gameplay element. Yeah. For example, if your game uses, uh, if your quote unquote visual novel uses, for example, the RAG system, a rapid uh, uh, something gaming system, uh, it actually has a game mechanic. You're clicking directions, it, it feels like mist now except with, with text rather than pretty pictures so at that point it's it's a game mm-hmm. because it's a game mechanic just say like the walking dead from uh, what was the name telltale of yeah telltale uh, would that count as a game mechanic the fact that you have like this much time to answer the question you have this much time to act actually I think that counts as a game mechanic because it's a time limit with consequences right? yeah uh, it's not click to find the next or click to get to the next page so it doesn't that's count as like a visual novel type thing. The and that, that's what was brilliant about The yeah, Walking yeah, Dead. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that you had like a set amount of time to answer the question yeah. and not answer the question or not yeah. doing something was also I an option. Kind of cheated in some parts in that part where then that, the second episode where we were escaping from the, from the cannibals mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. there's this guy who's about to kill the guy and then uh, because there, there came was this guy that was gonna kill the and guy then, yeah, um, exactly. my character was about I, I was I, want, I so wanted to kill that guy because it was already becoming annoying and, and so you let him kill the guy no 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 what I did my character <laughs> was I really stabbed the guy and then all of a sudden the next scene is that Clementine saw me and then all of a sudden I felt Oh my gosh, seriously, I have to restart because of this? And I did. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, so, with uh, the other guy. Yeah, the other guy. And with the other guy. guy. With the other guy. That dude. That guy. That dude, you know. With the guy. Uh, if you've yeah. heard of uh, the, the so-called Princess Maker games, I mean, those what? are sometimes called visual novels, but those are actually games because there's a mechanic here. You're trying to... Wait, Princess Maker games? Like, like, like um, paper dolls for the 21st century kids these days? Princess yeah. Maker, whatever. Yeah, so, some Princess Maker games, for example, uh, you have to plan their daily routine. How are, you, how are you exposed to these games, John? Excellent question. <laughs> Storytelling. <laughs> research. Research, exactly. You have to... I'd like to look through your search history, John. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, the NSA? I would imagine, though, that like writers have the most like colorful search histories on Google. <laughs> the research, because of all of the research, like you have, you know, hmm. tutus, and then like your next, hmm. you know, search is princess, about like, yeah. uh, princess jewelry, and stuff. <laughs> you know, followed by like how to get away with murder. You know? yeah. <laughs> what is the best way to use cyanide? You know? no. <laughs> Darn it, man! You're exposing me. Exposing your what? Nothing. Your search <laughs> history. Uh-huh. Your search history. Yes. <laughs> I would imagine exactly like writers probably have like the most interesting search histories, but then mm. you know. Oh well, yeah, you have to like uh, uh, <laughs> just to, for example. Yeah, we were mm. talking about princess maker. Yeah, games. with princess maker games, uh, you have. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, so, can't get over it because though. I mean, yeah, I, I mean seriously, you, you think you think you're thinking it's it's. Paper dolls for the 21st century, but kids these days. At, at some point, it, it got sophisticated enough that you're you're planning career directions or life directions, or trying to turn them into something, and that that is a classic RPG element, just not in your classic RPG setting. Mm, so, okay. or classic fantasy, or classic RPG. fantasy yeah. setting, yes. Yeah. So they've graduated from paper doll to actual RPG. So. <laughs> Yeah, the beauty about it is because I think it's because of the code involved. It's actually an, an easy entry way if you're a budding game designer. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, because it's all logic trees. Yes, like a lot of it is logic trees, and that's like the basis of everything. <laughs> yeah, so the simple logic. Yeah, it's uh, you could actually if you're a game developer, try to develop a game here by yourself. You don't have that many resources. Games like that are probably some of the best ways to start get started. Just master the language. Master what sort place. of language do they use in gaming, by the way? Depends. Uh, it depends on the game you want. Yeah, yeah but Rempy? Rempy is just Python, right? Or, uh, uh, it doesn't matter, actually. Yeah. Uh, like, there was... Or um, just pretty much making a game mechanic. Like, mm. Miko was always talking about if you want to start making games, start with doing a tabletop game. Because okay. yeah, if it can work as a tabletop game, you just need to put in the code and the graphics and the resources and whatnot. And then you could turn it into something 3D. Because it's always math involved. There's always the if-then-else for yeah, video some. games. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Pretty yeah. much, like, basic as Mario. You move to the right. Would you jump over that mushroom? Or get that mushroom? This will happen. Like, certain mechanics like that. 
So that's, I think that's the hardest part about the game, or at least, I guess, we talked about this before. What makes a game for me is the mechanics, is the game itself. What makes a game a game is the gameplay aspect, the mechanic aspect. Yeah. That's why some games can work without a story. Tetris Dota, game without hmm. no story whatsoever. Tetris is the best. Tetris example. is my favorite example. But then, but then Joem will say, yeah. Joem will say though that it depends on what you mean by a story. Exactly because Joem will posit that the story of Tetris is the L block falling into place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or or uh, did, did, didn't they make a song about it? Like it's a story about the Soviet worker. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, fine. But yeah, there, yeah, there's a conflict that you're just waiting for something to fall that will solve all your problems, but then you're just putting aside everything to the sides. You're just waiting for that long block. <laughs> Drop in one, at the right time. Yeah, the, the four four block. Yeah, straight the four, four block. Oh my gosh! That one. Yeah, so that's a that's that's a, an that interesting could be question. A story, what is quote unquote? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. what yeah. is a story in a game? But mm. at its core, it's still a gameplay that was just transformed into a story. But gameplay always rules. Like missile command, no story whatsoever. Well, arguably, we're gonna be no talk- story whatsoever. Yeah, because if we're gonna be talking about the gameplay and whatnot. Actually, that's uh, that's that's actually what made the Last of Us even more frustrating for me. So it was such Here a good game go. with regard to the with regard to the mechanics. I mean the stealth mechanics. I mean I have to admit there are times when I would purposely make a mistake so that I can redo the entire segment and Well that's why you didn't enjoy the game. You weren't you know, Yeah. You weren't, you weren't, you weren't playing, playing it properly. No, I mean there are some mercy there came up mistakes. Point. Is yeah. this the part of the podcast where we say, oh, spoiler alert over for <laughs> the last yeah, There are some parts in The Last of Us where I have to admit that I became really good in the aiming and the everything. And the, I became basically a, oh, oh, a more, more spoiler the alerts. Of the game. <laughs> more of this. So but does, then again, and then, well, of course, I think I'm still going for, I'm kind of hoping at least that the ending will mean something. And then when it came to that ending where then everything suddenly felt I felt so guilty afterwards killing all those people it's so, also does, did, that so does that make The Last of Us a less of a game a good game with a bad story or does it make it a not good game or does or, it make it a yeah is it, is it just a good game it, with just a bad ending my personal take on it the story and the mechanics should never be separated should be organically combined in this case I think The Last of Us got carried away with its mechanics in the last hour, like what John said, so, that it more or less distracted us from the story. But I then think. say, what about um, games like, uh, what was the name of that game where it goes twirly twirly 3D? Um, Fez. Uh, Fez. Yeah, what about like Fez? What I was the story with Fez? I haven't. Fez is about some, what do you call this? I, I forgot. Kid, planet, whatever. Yeah, see, that, that's the thing. Like, you, you, couldn't, the, you couldn't give like two craps about the story. What's, yeah, what, what's the awesome about element. it is the, whoop, whoop. I don't know. I think because the last of us really developed the story. I think they were pushing. Last of Us marketing was really right. Story, story, story. I think this has always been the problem with Naughty with Naughty Dog games with regard to the story. They're trying to. I mean, well, it's good that they're really trying to go for the storytelling. To well, I saw this editorial saying that they actually want to push for. Storytelling in the medium which quote unquote ignores storytelling. I disagree, but, uh, but, but that's according to the Last of Us people. Yeah. I mean, to the Not the Dog people. I disagree mm, because but, I, I think it's a false dichotomy. Yeah, you're uh, uh, positive. Positive. <laughs> you're, you're saying <laughs> you're saying that uh, <coughs> story, <laughs> that story <laughs> and the uh, game mechanic are like. Uh, Two distinct elements, with, while ignoring the fact that these are actually intertwined. Because if bless you again. if you're uh, you have a game mechanic, but there's no end, like Tetris. Uh, well, Tetris sort of had a built-in end, and that was like the high score. The game over. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. And the way yeah. Silent Hill. Well, how nihilistic! Yeah. <laughs> like thinking about that, 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 that is such a nihilistic like thought. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we're gonna yeah. talk about mechanics also. Mm-hmm. I mean, when we're gonna talk about how, how very what, what makes the game you know, and what <coughs> makes the game a bit difficult, even the whole idea, the whole mechanic of Silent Hill and some survival horror games, where in the point in the survival horror where you're supposed to feel helpless, and which is diminished by the fact that you'll be given weapons, at least in games like the original Resident Evil and Silent Hill Two, wherein we know in Silent Hill that your protagonist is an everyday Joe. Yeah. And then you can't expect that guy to be accurate with a sniper rifle or any weapons 
and you can't expect the guy to flawlessly navigate okay. the city, which is why what John calls the panic system. Or, and if you yeah, really because, panic because while playing the game, here's the thing, though. Deck. In Diablo, plays like RPG games. I'm gonna cite Diablo as an example. You start off as a scrub, <laughs> but eventually your character builds up to become a badass. Yeah. So. You that's progress. character development but it's well, storytelling exactly. you progress storytelling. with your character yeah. even in Silent Hill the moment you learn the mechanics yeah. even if you know the character is not good at sniping eventually you're gonna learn in yeah, the yeah. game how to shoot properly but there will be some sort of development also in the character arc. yeah, yeah. 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 But you more develop with your character you're coasting more, through the game with your character it kind of seems to be more of a mechanical development though uh, mechanics development yeah, but actually but here more, here it becomes seamless uh, character and mechanical development Grow together, and I think it's something because uh, the, the appeal of games actually stems, I think, uh, from uh, one an element of storytelling, and that is conflict resolution. You have a conflict, you overcome it. You have uh, this obstacle, you overcome it. Um, you mm. you what know, is your obstacle with, te- with uh, Tetris? Your obstacle with Tetris is that all, you have all these blocks the that don't fit together. I think mm. I so you have to overcome it, and that is a basic premise of storytelling as well. With uh, some games, for example, that seemingly are pure mechanic, maybe it's just inviting you to come up with a story yourself. Like, how do you see yourself? Yeah, as because a there's always player? a, yeah. a solution. You always yeah. have to find the resolution. That's the, how you beat the yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Because, for example, why do so many people hate fetch quests? <laughs> it's because it feels like <laughs> life. Yeah, 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 you have this mechanic. <laughs> it feels like real life. And you're, you're, you keep doing you're it, but something. to what yeah. end? Uh, yes. Is it a... So, XP. <laughs> yeah, so, item XP. Whatever. So, but if the end is unsatisfactory, then the gameplay mechanic becomes burdensome. I think that becomes yeah. a problem. Yeah. Makes sense. Last yeah. So, most of the games we've ta- been talking about is, uh, are single player games. Is it possible to do a storytelling aspect on a multiplayer game? I think for that. With the yeah, with the multiplayer yeah. game, uh, either you, you could have the story presented to you like a uh, Left 4 Dead. Or you could create like a, your own group narrative, like in World of Warcraft. You have your well, guild. Like you these are your really rivals. Yeah. Or the thing we do with Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah. have our own squads. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but that's like meta story, though. Yeah, yeah but at this mm. point, you have games that invite the meta story, like Tetris, yeah. because it's your like yeah. uh, it's your, your yeah. journey. Yeah. It's your yeah. personal yeah. journey to be Players better than yourself. Yeah. 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 So, so, so there were some GTA multiplayer Tetris. So there are you're the other guy who sends the blocks and <laughs> so that that would be really cool. That, <laughs> yeah. that would be amazing. Game idea. Game idea. Copyright. <laughs> right. right. All right. Coding time. <laughs> like Eiji's trying to be, uh, yeah, complete his blocks and Jao keeps sending him the the shitty well the, the crappy, not, blocks. crappy blocks. <laughs> is there already a game like that? I sort of recall a game yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, there probably is. But nothing for the app store. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. Let's do this. iOS approvals. Here we come. So, so uh, it the, the story is key to, to providing an end to the game mechanic, a purpose, because uh, we're human beings. Uh, actions without purpose are sort of are not enjoyable or are not worth getting into. So existentialist. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome to third world yeah. philosophy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> in the game of Pong, you, the player, control the paddle, which keeps the ball inside the enclosure. Isn't that some sort of form of authoritarian? <laughs> <laughs> the to ball what? wants to be free. <laughs> no, actually, or the, is it? the ball. Oh, are you trying to control the anarchistic ball? No, no, the no, the, no. Actually, it's different. <laughs> You Person want the ball to be free. You want the ball to be free, but you want the ball to go out to the other guy's end, not on yours. Uh, yeah. No, well, <laughs> well, for a single player game, you're keeping yeah. it all within. Well, that, what if Pong by definition subversive. is a multiplayer game, though? Like Pong is a multiplayer game. It's just that the other game, person, the, yeah, the other well, person, quote unquote, is the computer. Your is yeah, the yeah. developer. Yeah. Because it's still like the little algorithms that the, that the developer yeah. put in. Um, to be the quote unquote other player, <laughs> so like it isn't about authoritarian regimes or whatever. Uh, it's it's okay. all about um, it's 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 all about border. It's pong is is, is a lot like uh, papers please. Mm, yeah. <laughs> border control. It's about border, border control. control. <laughs> this is not the border you're supposed to go out of. <laughs> or, you know, trying to suppress rebels. <laughs> When you hit the pong ball into a power up, is that kind of character development? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> where you can now uh, expand the paddle or <laughs> their turbo. <laughs> oh you just God. have better border security. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but at the end of the day, for me, it's just gameplay should have at least good story. Yeah. Or yeah. the story should be guided by good gameplay. And when something digress to each other, like Tomb Raider. Okay. Okay. Character is saying, oh, I hate killing. Oh, why am I doing this? Then murders 30 people in the next sequence. <laughs> yeah. that, is, that breaks everything. That, that is a problem of, of active storytelling, not of the mechanics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm saying the, 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 because they're not cooperating. Yeah, the, the pace is different because if, for example, you, know, uh, you have your character kills her first or second or yeah. third, you should display... Feel the same remorse every yeah. time. Or, or you, you show the eventual moral degeneration of the character, like what they did with uh, Spec of the Lines. <laughs> or with the far superior from Tomb Raider, um, Far Cry 3. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Far, so, yeah. Superior from Tomb Raider. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, uh, Far Cry 3 was a better example. I guess my beef with Far Cry 3 is they have the supposed bad ending when I don't think it's the bad ending. <laughs> Yeah, at that point, Air at that point, it's door. just a matter of uh, what that, the viewer can yeah. just see it. Like for example, yeah, at least at least now you're free to impose on what you want and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Like for example, if, if I'm playing uh, like Dragon Age Origins, I always kill Zevran. Mm-hmm. And people think could like, oh, that's such a cruel thing to do. That's a bad thing. But for me, you know, he tried to kill me. Yeah. I'll kill him. <laughs> Which is the great thing about <laughs> video games. That's why I think it's so hard to tell a story in video mm-hmm. games, but brilliant when it pays off. Mm-hmm. Is because you can put yourself in there as opposed to a movie you're a bit passive but the rewards of a movie is different it's totally different that was sort of the uh, that was sort of the idea of Halo right like by by having Master Chief be like have no distinct characteristics because it's supposed to be you in there but what about video games that that are set in a the the silent protagonist yeah but what about (laughs) video games set in a universe like uh, spin-offs like Star Wars video games or uh, but trying to vi- video yourself. games that already have a storyline. Yeah, you're immersing you're, yourself you're, in that universe. You're piggybacking your story out of an existing story. Kyle Katarn. Well, I, I guess <laughs> we can no. nice of the old Republic also. Mm. I think we, we can so make nice. the distinction there, right? Because you, you, you have those games where, say, you play as Batman. Um, or, uh, Gosh, we'll find, um Well, that's the set of the Star Wars universe. You are um, random X-Wing fighter number two, right? Like, that's... That's your character, and that's so the sort of Master Chief analogy. Or you can play as like Han Solo flying the Millennium Falcon, yeah. mm. which, um, yeah. which 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 offer two very different like storytelling options. Yeah, because if you're random X-wing fighter number two, then at least you're part of the universe. But Dot if you're Tumblr. Han Solo, com. you're a key <laughs> component of yeah. the the main. And you want to do Han Solo things? Yeah. I guess that was my the thing I love about um, Arkham Asylum. Because you're doing Batman things. Yeah, Except yeah. the Batmobile? Except the Batmobile. That's but the only thing lacking in um, Ar- Arkham, Arkham Asylum. Asylum. And even, Arkham, even Arkham City. But yeah, Arkham City didn't have the Batmobile. But the, aren't they going to do that in Arkham Arkham Knight is going to have the Batmobile. Yeah. So, alright, you're totally Batman now. <laughs> Except you're not, right? Arkham Knight? Are you still Bruce Arkham Wayne? Arkham Knight, you're still Bruce Wayne. No, that's uh, different. Arkham Origins is a prequel. Oh, Arkham wait. Knight is the one we are we, yeah, are we supposed to say spoiler alert again? No, 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 no. The game hasn't come out yet. <laughs> oh, the game hasn't come out yet. We pre-spoilered it. <laughs> Pre-spo- <laughs> First of you. <laughs> yeah, lovely jubbly. A lovely what? Lovely jubbly. What's a lovely jubbly? I have no idea. I just kind of like the word play. Anyway, speaking of play, Borderlands. Been playing it a lot because, again, uh, we might do Let's Plays on it. Some sort of let's plays on it with uh, third world gaming guys. You know what? Let's release this as a third world gaming episode. Let us usurp <laughs> their throne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they they are on a break of sorts. So why yeah. not? Oh, yeah. they broke up? No. no. <laughs> oh. Just holiday rest. Uh, so they, you said they were on a break, like from each other. Oh. Aww. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking more for gaming episode. Yeah, but like... Um, but aren't most Bodega Nights episodes? Not really. Not really. Oh, or awesome. just with all the guys around. So, Actually, sometimes we talk about basketball or... or oh, politics. yeah, dude. But let's not go there. Let's, let's go there. Let's go there. <laughs> yeah, later. that's Bodega Nights we're going to talk about coaches. And I wanted to talk about comics with you, Buck. Yeah. About, it's like, been a while since Neil, like, 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 Neil Gaiman stuff. Yeah. Anyway, wait. Are there any Neil Gaiman stuff? Oh, I was actually gonna propose a show to Ag. So, um, what were we talking about? How was? 
I was anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we can cut that out in post. Um, <laughs> we were talking about Borderlands. <laughs> oh yeah, Borderlands. The pre sequel or what? No, that? the Borderlands Two. Okay. Also known as Accounting Simulator. <laughs> Wait, it's really a multiplayer game. No, you can play it single player. And the builds you can well. do. Yeah, the builds you can do, you can play it as a single player. Like, you could really utilize PVM. What about a married player? Sorry. <laughs> what? Or it's a complicated player. Because <laughs> it's a single player, oh. married player. Now you realize why. Separated. Now you realize why games with. Uh, with uh, extensive and immersive single player campaigns create what are so called uh, gaming widows <laughs> what gaming windows gaming widows yes gaming widows like the spider yeah but mm. uh, going back to borderlands <laughs> they should get madonna it's, to do the theme song for borderlands <laughs> jesus <laughs> anyway <laughs> she already has oh, a song like pong dude like borders <laughs> yeah. anyway um, or maybe the book story i don't think simulator the it's, game. it's it's, it's it's there are moments when it's just fun and then you gotta stop to check the loot the loot it's so weird I don't know why in Jablo it works in <laughs> Jablo I think it's because it's a horror component it works rim shot it, 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 I don't know it, it works I guess the pacing when playing. you look at the loot you, you, when you fight a huge I boss think, you know that the loot for Jablo. the boss will uh, be how great are the, how's the item management in Borderlands no, how it's, are the it's okay. inventory it's, it's, no it's it's, it's Pretty simple. It's pretty simple, and Maybe the pace is a bit slow. I think it's you're encouraged to. It's it's weird because it's some the action just cuts off. Wait, so in other words, basically Borderlands is a first-person dungeon crawler. It is. It's set in a weird futuristic setting. And the, the problem I think with Borderlands is that uh, you're, it's loot and shoot. Yeah, it's loot and uh, shoot. The gun. I just want to shoot and then loot extent. later. No, but <laughs> what makes it different from Diablo? I mean, I've been playing. Which is that, I've been playing again. Diablo two for a while again. I I've mean, recently play, I I recently played Diablo two again. Here's <laughs> again. I'm actually doing a shop and build just a bit. Uh, <laughs> I fun. learned my lesson. I learned my lesson from Moti Yeah, but but my thing is, it's shoot and loot. But weird, it works for Diablo. But oddly enough, it feels so. Weird not with borderline. It's so slow. Maybe so because of the I guess the, the pace. I think the pace I, because I, because you shoot. It's fun to shoot to do the action. To because in a way, the all about skills. clicking and everything. You yeah, I guess. I guess. That, and then all of a sudden, once the shooting bits is done, okay, I have to take a couple of minutes just to check Wait. this. Yeah, I, those. actually, that, there there's the problem of uh, exactly of uh, borderlands. borderlands. It's that. The the life cycle of your items are so so fast because there's so much new stuff being dropped that you, you rarely get to care or, or enjoy the stuff you actually loot. Wow. Well, I just had an epiphany about the games. Like you were talking about inventory management, accounting simulators, <laughs> product life. life cycles in a video game. This is like <laughs> an analogy for a business management course. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's why Borderlands feels like that for me. <laughs> yeah, but see, uh, in Jablo. You can have your go-to weapon. You even have they even have weapons that they encourage you to keep, like the name weapons, like the yeah. patriarch. Here, there are no are such there weapons. Ones? Yeah, oh, there, are ones. Ones. So there are in Borderlands, I have, I have but it's Borderlands. all in the end game. Yeah, once you reach level seventy-two, but it's a slog just to get to seventy-two, and it's okay because you're slowly mastering your character as you go along. Not as it's not as quick as in Diablo, where you could finish Diablos in, in Diablo in normal mode. And you're gonna hit max level, uh, max skills. Right. You're well, gonna have you all your skills, not max skills, but like you're gonna have pain. access to every skill you have yeah, yeah, by yeah. level thirty. The skills. I have. I'm about to finish. Skills. To I pay actually the bills. finished the main story, just Borderland. running through some of the DLCs. Because yeah. he's talking about. I still haven't had all the yeah, so it's like proper skills badass skills for, Borderlands. <laughs> for Borderlands. Yeah. But it's okay because you're encouraged to move further, progress until uh, you go to the end game. I wonder how this uh, is going to like late game sound. of the border, <laughs> <from> Borderlands. So <laughs> what I did to compensate because so many weapons, right? I just want to shoot. I just want to shoot. I just want to mow down through monsters. Okay. So what I did was <laughs> screw those items. I'm just gonna go alone. Yeah, because How did that go? You, huh? How did Still that go? going well. That's why you uh, you have to be able to it's to like love your loot. Exactly. 
<laughs> you can't in Borderlands because it's so interchangeable. You can, you can with you can. Diablo. Huh? Or if you don't like what you got in Diablo, just sell it or leave it. Yeah, or, or in Diablo, you can create like weapons, customized weapons. You can you can you put know, a bit of yourself in your weapon. And in so, or just how you play. <laughs> yeah, Maybe that's why I changed how I play <laughs> Borderlands <laughs> like, right yes, now. Yeah. I don't anyway. stop from section to section. Oh, gonna check those items, gonna check those items. Nah. I'm just a gonna sail analysis, from yeah. start to finish like and then providing color main, commentary when I get to the main boss once I defeat the main boss the that's the only time I stop <laughs> that's the only time I look at the loop of the main boss other than that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just shooty bits you know and then at your solves the problem for me I'm enjoying Borderlands 2 right now fire, because of that like, mindset do you go for market share or profit <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry yeah, I try to maximize Everything in the game. <laughs> See, go yeah, <laughs> profit maximization in Borderlands. Strangely <laughs> enough, I have this. I actually find item management, even though, <laughs> even though some people, even though some people find How's that thing tedious. <laughs> no, 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 Mass What's your supply one? chain management? <laughs> the worst inventory management, I think. If we played Mass Effect One, it has a really Diablo before the expansion. My gosh. Um, Diablo, wait, Diablo 2. Diablo well, you should before, get a new warehouse. <laughs> before Lord of Destruction. <laughs> My god. I... You want to get that expansion as soon as you can so that you can have new options. You should attend a conference on best, best practices on supply <laughs> I <don't> management. Know, <laughs> this is a handbook on how to fudge your resume. Yeah. If you've ever played Diablo or Borderlands, you can always say that one of your skills is item management, management? Yeah, uh, <laughs> supply chain management, logistics. <laughs> logistics. logistics. Yeah, it's hard to explore all those travel options when yeah. you go th- from the past travel points. And then traveling through the milk, the entire milk. Product, bro- product life cycle planning. You know when to drop uh, an item, uh. when to get a new one. Uh. And you have yeah, to master your finances because there are three currencies you have to balance. I don't think <laughs> there's the black market currency that you have to always keep in check. You have your main loot and gold. I don't think they'll and be you have your credit cards. Yeah, the dad's credit card for the DLCs. I'm actually gonna quite brag. I'm gonna brag a bit here with regard to your dad's credit card. Uh-oh. No, oh, no, no, we have a one percenter here. No, with regard to no, with regard to Mass Effect One. With regard to Mass Effect One, mm-hmm. I mean, you know how many people hate that Warthog, right? I mean, that tank that they the the tank driving. The, what do you call that? No? That that vehicle in Mass the Effect. Mako. The Mako. The yeah. Mako. You know how people hate control the Mako because it feels so stiff. I'm actually proud to say that I'm yes. able to heads. I'm actually able to kill people with that, and then successfully navigate. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with the uh, Mako as well. My beef with the Mako is <laughs> I want it. to shoot. <laughs> I don't want the Buck is, thing. Buck is proud that he can manipulate the stiff. <laughs> guys, you guys, I can shoot. I can shoot from the Mako well. Yeah, Jump but you're not Shepard in there. You're a huge six wheeler. Think I'm about. <laughs> That's it. That actually makes it interesting. I'm gonna. I'm actually thinking if there's gonna be a movie for that. I think if they're gonna be going for inside jokes after they get out of the makeup. My goodness, where did they learn how to drive? <laughs> actually, uh, I think that taking out the the Mako, uh, sort of shrank the Mass Effect universe. Actually, yeah. Because that was my problem with Mass Effect 2 yeah. when I started playing it. But I think uh, Mass Effect 2 story flowed better. Yes. Uh, and uh, it, it stuck to the gameplay mechanic that worked and built the story around it. Yep. Uh, but I think uh, you could be that ambitious. Like, there's this new game coming out called No Man's Sky. And it's, per- it's like a massive multiplayer uh, like RPG where you're on a spaceship and you actually have two mechanics you're, no you're flying a ship or you're a soldier with a gun and you can actually go from deep space combat to planetary combat you can go on the surface of a planet and the detail is amazing like there are new species on the planet there are animals there there's vegetation there and actually shoot people there then hop on your ship go up into the action. atmosphere and shoot people there too basically an action version of Spore yes <laughs> like an action version of Spore or the last part of Spore that's two gameplays in one yeah. Sport? Which is like, well, like Star four. Wars Battlefront. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think the developers brag that your average gamer would need like uh, two thousand or three thousand years to employ the, uh, explore the entire universe by themselves. Oh, watch how people will just you know. But you can share information, but you know, it's like yeah. by your lonesome, like, you have to hop from planet to planet. 
yeah, that's why uh, I mean, people are gonna have a way to explore. At least they're gonna have oh, this universe is like ruled by Asians or yeah. something because that community will be able to get yeah. access to that. We are entering Korea verse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Prepare weapons accordingly. But don't worry, man. Exploring planets, time is relative. It's like this in movie where this farmer goes up to space <laughs> and finds out that, you know, gravity is a thing. Oh my gosh, that movie. I think Heinlein made the, wrote something about it. It's called Farmer in the Sky. Oh, we were talking about Interstellar. <laughs> 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 like farmers in How'd the sky. How'd you guys find it? How'd you guys find, find it? Right? Like farmers? Uh, I, 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 I think it... Have you guys seen it? Have you guys seen it? I think it was Nolan's oh, best wait. film. Exactly. Are, are we gonna say spoiler alert again? Are we gonna say spoiler alert? The movie has been has come and gone. <laughs> yes. Spoiler alert. You're gonna be a alert. game about it? <laughs> hey, no, no, no. But going back to gaming, if this is gonna be a third world gaming episode, I don't know. The ending really looked like Halo. What happened at the end? The ending. Where like, oh, no, not the ending, but like the, the ship that they were riding. Oh, Interstellar? Yeah, in oh, Interstellar. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like Halo. Right? Uh, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But, but actually, uh, aren't they based on real plans, plans for ships? <laughs> if ever yeah. humanity left for interstellar travel, that that, that those uh, round circular things. Because humanity is not meant to stay in Earth; it's yep. meant to leave it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, not really. 